Hello and welcome back to Crazy Dove Studio. In today's video, we will try and understand about Networker Cloud Boost and how to deploy and configure a Cloud Boost device. <laughs> Cloudboost Appliance provides an integrated solution for existing supported backup environments by enabling the transfer of backup to a public, hybrid or private cloud storage. Cloudboost decouples metadata from the data. Encryption keys, metadata and file system information are housed separately from the data which removes a common bottleneck for cloud read and write operations. All advanced data services such as chunking, encryption, inline deduplication, compression and bulk data transfers are performed separately from the metadata storage. There are three use cases that CloudBoost supports. One is the direct backup to cloud. Second is the backup of cloud resident application in public clouds such as AWS or Microsoft Azure. The third being Turing to cloud for long term retention of data. So CloudBoost has two main components. One is the CloudBoost appliance and other the cloud storage provider. CloudBoost appliance indexes, deduplicates, compresses, encrypts and manages data transfer to and from the cloud. The optional data cache stores the data that is most rec recently written to or read from the cloud. CloudBoost appliance can be hosted on the customer's site on an VMware ESX like how we have done in our demo or also it can be done on AWS or Microsoft Azure. The second component which is the cloud storage provider provides the object storage for data that is sent from the CloudBoost appliance. Several public and private cloud storage providers are supported. You can look at the compatibility guide to see which providers are supported uh, with CloudBoost. There is also a third component, which is the EMC Secure Remote Services, uh, also called as EMC SRS, which is a virtual appliance that enables two-way remote communication with EMC Secure Remote Services to monitor the health and to communicate events, alerts, and so on to the customer support proactive. The next slide shows the firewall port requirements for Cloud Boost. Uh, these are the minimum firewall requirements. For more details of the firewall port requirement, you can refer to the security requirement guide of CloudBoost and Networker. So this was a short little introduction about the CloudBoost uh, on Networker. So if you do have any questions, please put them in the comment section so that me or anybody in the communi uh, community will be able to help. Let's now go ahead and look at how you can deploy a cloud boost appliance on VMware ESX host. Before I go ahead and deploy, it is very important to make sure that your local DNS or the DNS in your environment has an entry for your cloud boost appliance. So here I have created a record with a host name CB2 and uh, the IP address 192.168.242. So if in case you do not have a DNS entry, you won't be able to deploy and configure a CloudBoost device successfully. So this is definitely one of the prerequisites. So once I have ensured that the DNS entry is in place, I'm going to go into my vCenter and go to VM and templates and on the respective location where I want to create that particular appliance, uh, I'm going to right click and say deploy an OVF template, then go ahead and browse for that template. So I have selected the version 19.2 so that I have a chance to show you how to upgrade the CloudBoost appliance as well. So after selecting the appliance, click on OK, then click on Next. So it will ask you where you want to keep this plus the appliance name. We are going to call it CB2 and the location is going to be Infra the ESX host. So I have just one, so I'm going to keep that. It's validating the OVF. So 
so you see uh, it is asking me to review the details so I'm all good with that so next we are going to select where this is going to be and I'm going to select thin provisioning uh, mainly because I have limited storage uh, and uh, but in production you can go ahead with thick provisioning or thin provisioning it again depends on what uh, process or uh, what your particular organization follows so we'll click on next there I have just one network uh, that I have configured so I'm going to select that and click on next here's the summary and then let's click on finish so this will take a few minutes to complete as it has to upload the OVF package and then deploy it. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back to you once the deployment is completed. All right, so you will see that the deployment and import of the OVF template is completed. So let's go ahead and power this up. So again, it will just take a few minutes to complete the total uh, both sequence and power on completely so again I'll pause the video here and come back to you once the server is up and running all right so the appliance is almost up and the first thing it's going to ask you is to change your old system password so the default password for Cloud Boost is password. It's P A S S W O R D. So let's go ahead and P A S S W O R D. It's going to ask for a new password. Give it a new password. All right. Now we have to go ahead and configure uh, the Cloud Boost device so that we can access and uh, integrated with the cloud storage let's start with the command status which is going to show you the current status if you look at the status you will see that the configuration is from the DHCP so let's go ahead and update this configuration to customize this to our requirement to do this or to update the IP address so that's what we're going to do first we are going to use the command net config 80 we just have one NIC or Ethernet uh, connected to this particular machine so it's 80 192.168.2.42 if you remember from our DNS configuration earlier net mask is going to be 255 255 255 0 and the gateway for me is 192.168.2.1 uh, config oh there is no gateway configuration here so it's only 255.255.0 once this configuration is done let me add a route so here there is a default route already available so okay it's now gone so let's go ahead and add that back so command for that is route add public or any IP net mask everything we use the gateway 192.168.21 wait for that to apply and check the status again you will see that we have the routes added next let's configure the DNS so I'm configuring three DNS's here one is the local DNS again the one uh, on the Windows host that I showed you earlier and that is 192.168.2.10 I'm going to set a secondary as well and this is going to be my router 
and then I'm going to set one more tertiary which is the public DNS and once that is set let's check status again and you will see that the DNS configuration is done now we will need to set the FQDN for this host and to do that we will be using the command FQDN and the host name is CB2 and my domain is create0.com Alright, so it's updating this request And once it is completed, you will see that it's enabling the port 443, which is the port that we will be connecting to, uh, to configure the appliance. So you'll see that all this configuration is in place. So let's go ahead and connect to this host 42 advanced accept risk. The username is admin and password is password1. Alright, so there is nothing much or a lot that you can do on the Cloud Boost UI. So the Cloud Boost UI is mainly used to create the cloud profile, which is basically the integration with the cloud storage and then creating the appliance on the cloud storage, which is done here and also used for the recovery uh, purposes. So let me get click here and let's go ahead and configure a cloud profile. So as mentioned earlier, the integration that uh, the cloud storage integration that we are going to do is with Google Cloud Platform or GCP and before you uh, go ahead here maybe I can just quickly show you what are the information that you need you need a display name so I'll just call this GCP I think this is my project name so let me call that as in as well and then click on the cloud storage provider and you will see all the private and public cloud storage services that are, can be integrated with Cloud Boost so for this demo we will be using google cloud storage uh, we have all we need to do the configuration is the security key and the access key so let me just quickly show you how to get this information uh, for this we will have to get on to our cloud console and in here we will have to go to uh, click on the burger menu basically and then select Google Cloud Storage and Settings and you will be landed on this page so basically you will be actually landed on the project access uh, tab and from here you can click on interportability and uh, the this is the endpoint that uh, Cloud Boost is going to use to interact with the uh, cloud storage that is the Google Cloud Storage uh, API and the configuration that we need is at the very end so you can uh, set the current project as the default project so my project ID is this here and this is the access key that I'm going to use for this configuration now do not make this config uh, information public because whoever has this information can go ahead and configure or integrate their Cloud Boost or any other uh, devices that uses this information to integrate to Google Cloud Storage. So I'm going to delete this, so don't worry, I'm not going to hold on to it for uh, the entirety. So go ahead and copy the access key from here into this field and the secret into this field. And then let's click on save. So we don't need this so the best way to check this uh, if the configuration is right and if you can go ahead is just click on the appliance configuration configure appliance and then give it a appropriate name let's call it cb2.crazy.com and this is the cloud profile by default it is the only one you have 
uh, and then you can go ahead and click on validate so now this is going to check the uh, connection between your cloud boost and the uh, cloud storage API and as you see this is validated so that means that we are good to go uh, the other configuration that you can mention is the names of the containers so this is basically going to be the name of the buckets on the google cloud storage so there are two buckets that gets created one is to store the actual data that is the backup data that you're sending across to the cloud storage from the cloud boost appliance and the other is a system backup container which backs up the configuration of your uh, cloud boost appliance uh, and you can actually set up the frequency of the backup here. Uh, the, the maximum frequency is every three hours uh, and you can then you know change it according to your requirement. Uh, I'm not going to use this so I'm going to use the default names uh, or default uh, bucket creation that happens so two buckets are created automatically as well if in case you don't select them but if in case again if you want, want to put a naming convention in you can do that as well you can enable NTP here as well so we can use the Google NTP for this uh, for this configuration for now if you have your own internal NTP in your organization, you can mention that NTP server here. Uh, here is the Google, uh, uh, here is the backup configuration. And once all this is done, you will click on save. Now it is going to do the configuration and create all the buckets on the cloud storage. So this might take some time. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back to you once uh, the configuration is complete as the configuration is progressing let me just quickly show you the bucket existing buckets right now so these are the buckets uh, right now let's check back again once the configuration is done all right so the configuration is completed so as soon as the configuration completes it is going to ask you to download the recovery information now this is important because uh, this will be provided to you only once and you won't be able to retrieve it again and this is this information is required whenever you want to do a recovery of your cloud boost appliance if in case of uh, any issues with your appliance so we are going to click on recover metadata which is going to be this metadata file and make sure that you are saving them to or copying them to a uh, safe location and this is your recovery key and then click on OK so once you have hit the acknowledge button it those uh, files will be purged and you won't be able to recover again and which is again the best practice uh, I'm just gonna click on not now uh, because I don't know I might be replaced misplacing those files um, again the configuration is now complete and if you see you don't have anything in your storage there's no deduplication there's no uh, uh, org level uh, or log level set and let's now click go to our uh, storage and see that there is a bucket for the data that is already created I assume the uh, the backup bu bucket will be created when the backup is initialized uh, so always the bucket for the cloud boost is going to start with the name mag or prefixed with mag so that is one indication that uh, this particular bucket belongs to cloud boost so that's all the configuration that you had to do for um, integrating your cloud boost with cloud storage in an upcoming video we will look at how to integrate your cloud boost appliance with the network server thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video i hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my twitter account i will see you on another video Goodbye.